Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. John's on this beautiful day that God has blessed us with. Uh, welcome to those that are worshiping online. Uh, my name is Pastor Rick Roberts. Thanks for being here. For those that are worshiping in person, and Robbie, who came all the way from South Dakota to be with us today. And Joyce and Lily, good to see you all, and I hope I'm not missing some other newer visitors or so forth, but glad that you came to worship with us uh, as we are in fall break. So for those that are traveling, we'll be praying for those uh, doing a lot of traveling this week as we will continue to pray for the people affected by Hurricane Helene. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. Um, we were going to have a picnic today, but then we realized uh, that it's fall break and a lot of people said they wouldn't be here, so we've postponed it till Reformation Sunday, the 27th of this month, which will be a, a wonderful time for that. Um, uh, I've been, for visitors, I've uh, been in the midst of a five-week sermon series on what we believe as Lutherans, and starting next week, I was going to do a class on what we believe, but since we're not having a picnic, I'll do that today. If anybody wants to stay, we will start that class this Sunday for the next two Sundays leading up to the picnic. Uh, I think that is all that I have. Is there any other announcements? I would like you either look over the window after, after worship or go down and look at how our new memorial garden is coming together. We have a little waterfall out there and planters and some plants have been uh, planted and thanks to Marsha and her crew for making that happen. It's really coming together really, really well. Any other announcements? If not, as you are able, please rise for confession and profession of faith. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of hope. Amen. Amen. People of God, do we know that we are loved, redeemed, and sanctified by God? If we do not know that gospel truth, why? Because, because of sin, we believe or are made to believe. believe. We are not good enough for God. People of God, no matter who you are, no matter what you believe or are made to believe about your status with God, hear the good news of God's love for you. For it is by grace your sins are forgiven. For, for it is by grace we are loved, saved, and redeemed forever. And this is not our own doing. It is the gift from our gracious God of love, given to us, given to all people, and all means all. All people were created in Christ Jesus to know and live the truth of God's all-inclusive love, which was prepared before the foundation of the world to be our way of life. Because of Jesus' love for all, may we live to share the good news of God's grace with all people. Amen. As you are able, please remain standing for our opening hymn and face the cross. Thank you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
loving God as Jesus constantly prayed to you throughout his ministry to live your will. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to follow his example. Empower us to use Jesus' prayer as our way of life, to know and live your will of love for the world. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. <coughs> Psalm 51 will be read by responsibly by whole verse. Uh, the congregation will read the bolder print. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through with my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and have done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth, deeply within me, and would have me know wisdom deeply within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let the body of your joy be gladness, that the body you have broken may be yours. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our second reading is from James chapter 5. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will have the sick, will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel today according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Uh, we have a couple children. Y'all want to come up? Oh, I, I thought he was coming. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Good morning. How are y'all? Yeah, me too. I was up late watching Vanderbilt. <laughs> well, actually, they weren't the late game. But anyway, what a... It, well, anyway, we'll, we won't go there. We won't go there. Hey, we're going to talk about prayer today. And I want to pray something real quick right now, okay? Uh, did y'all hear something just a few minutes ago before I started reading the lesson? What did you hear? The prayer that we did before communion. 
Oh, okay. No, I was thinking, did you hear something like outside right before I read the gospel reading? Oh, an an ambulance. Let's pray. Gracious God, be with whoever is in that ambulance. Keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray. So we're going to talk about prayer today. So um, I kind of just want to wait and talk to everybody at one time. Um, Y'all pray. When do you pray? Whenever somebody's sick. Whenever somebody is sick. Is that a good idea? Yes. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. What else? What, what else do we pray? Whenever something happens to somebody. Like something may have happened to whoever might be riding in that ambulance. So we pray for them. So that might be something to do whenever you're driving around. Well, y'all aren't driving, but riding around. <laughs> And you hear an ambulance or whatever, see a fire truck, you might want to say, God, be with those people. Um, I think a lot of people, have y'all been praying for people in North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia and Florida because of the hurricane? Yeah. Why do you think we pray? To help them. To help them. Okay. Who else? I'm going to answer that in just a few moments. I don't want to put you guys on the spot, because guess what? I'm going to put them on the spot in just a few minutes. Okay, does that sound good? Prayer is really, really, really important. And and I think praying for whoever's in that ambulance, and the ambulance drivers, and, and whoever, is a wonderful thing to do. And I think uh, the theme for today is to make Jesus' prayer a way of life. So I'm just going to leave it right there. And then we're going to finish in just a few minutes, okay? Help me pray. Gracious God, Gracious God. Help, us help us to always pray to, always pray. to, you. to you and for each other. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Make this one short because this one's going to be long. No. <laughs> Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your hearing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. For those that are visiting today, uh, Robbie, good to have you. Joyce, and really good to see you all again. For the, This is the third week of a five-week sermon series that I'm doing on our Lutheran beliefs. And we started two weeks ago with the Ten Commandments, and we, we, we were reminded uh, that Luther put the Ten Commandments first in the Catechism, to help us to know how sinful we are, that we break them all, all the time. But we also learned, or were, were reminded, the Ten Commandments help point us to God, for God's grace to forgive us, which is what God did for us through Christ. And we were reminded that the law also helps us to do better, <laughs> to not break those things, because it makes our lives a little bit better when we live lives of love, which is what... Uh, the Ten Commandments are all about. Love God, love everybody else. Last week, we talked about the creed, that God created us in love for love, redeemed us through the Christ in love for love, and made holy by the uh, sancti were sanctified and made holy by the Spirit in love for love. And then we were reminded we do that because we are all one. We are all one body in Christ and with each other. And our response to that love we mentioned last week was to live lives of love. And I want to thank everyone who shared stories of how to live that love because that's what followers of <coughs> Jesus Christ does is to help people know that they are loved and to help them. And at the end of the sermon last week, I said, I'll tell you, this week, the best way to know and live God's love, and I believe that best way, uh, maybe, maybe not the best way, but one way, is by the Lord's Prayer. Every week before the Lord's Prayer, I say, let us be bold, and even more bold, to live the prayer that Jesus gives us. So, what is the purpose of prayer? It's discussion time. What is the purpose of prayer? Oh, man, I was, waiting to, I was waiting to the end. And you weren't even in class. 
Okay, we're going to come back to that. <laughs> or we can make the sermon shorter. <laughs> what is the purpose of prayer? To build a relationship, to be in communication. And, and the best way we can be in relationship is to communicate with each other. Absolutely. And when we communicate with God, talking to God, building that relationship, we focus more on God than not ourselves. And then we, then we start thinking about the community, that we are all in this world together, as James said in our reading today. And yes, Buzz, I think the greatest... One of the greatest aspects of prayer is to change us. We don't want God to change. I mean, if God has to change from this, we're in a heap of trouble, you know. So we, we need to be changed. So uh, let's, if you got the handout that Scott gave you when he came in, we're not going to go through it word by word, but this is something you can take with you. I just want to highlight a few things about Luther's explanation of the Lord's Prayer. And the very first thing is in here, our Father in heaven. So the very first word is what? Our. So what does that mean? It's not just my Father. It's not my God, you know, as some religions, you know, try to make it to be. Our Father, an all-inclusive God in heaven. So where is heaven? In our hearts, and Heidi went like this, right? So everywhere, because God created everything. God is a part of everything. So wherever God is, that's where heaven is. Hallowed be your name. What does hallowed mean? Revered. 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 Sacred. Holy. Holy. That God's name is holy. And as Luther says in the Catechism, that it might become holy within us, among us, because we were created by a God of love to be holy. And that's how I believe God sees everyone as holy. Your kingdom come. Hmm. What is God's kingdom? What is God's kingdom like? Any ideas? Love. Yeah, total peace, total love. As we said in, in Wednesday morning Bible study, and if you're available, come join us. Heaven, uh, the kingdom, is a place of right relationships. Was that you that said that, Julie? Yeah, you know, and I can't imagine a place of total right relationships or total love, but uh, that's what God's kingdom, we believe, is all about. Uh, where is God's kingdom? Well, just like we said, the, you know, heaven's everywhere. The kingdom is everywhere. Where is God's kingdom? I experienced God's kingdom Monday afternoon. Is it okay? Yeah. Being with Jen and Cooper and their family as they were saying their, their final goodbyes, you know, to your dad. And, um, and, you know, just telling the stories and the laughter and the tears, just incredible. I mean, it was kingdom come right there, you know, and, and using an eyedropper to give him communion. You know, the, that's the kingdom. You know, after that, I drove, I was driving up to Lebanon to visit Bob Glover, and I was talking to Gladys Gross on the phone, and I stopped at Old Hickory Boulevard, and there's always a homeless person or two there. And for our visitors, on these table outside, you saw some bags of food and stuff. They're called blessing bags. that have food items, snacks, water, t-shirt. And the other, another bag over there is bath bags for women's products. You know, so I gave one out and the woman was just ecstatic. So, I mean, that's kingdom living. And then I got to go see Bob. And he's been there exactly three months. I think he went, he had a fail. Bob is like 95 or 96. And he fell, you know, J J July 6th and broke like his shoulder, clavicle, some ribs, and has been in rehab. You went and saw him once, you know. And so I went to, 
I called Virginia Monday to see where he was, if he was still there. And so I went up and visited with Bob. And, you know, just the kingdom just abounded, you know, when he saw me and I saw him. And, you know, it was just a wonderful, wonderful <coughs> experience. Then I dropped in on D. Groves. Oh. Yeah, a blast from the past. Just had a wonderful, wonderful visit. You know, I visited with other people this week and just dropped in and, and just had wonderful. And that's what kingdom is, is living the relationships that God gives to us. Okay, so um, your will be done. What is God's will? Peace, love. I don't guess there's anything better than peace and love, is there? Kindness. Kindness. Yeah. Peace, love, kindness. And who is that peace, love, and kindness for? For everybody. For everybody. Where is God's will to be done? On earth as in heaven, right? Yeah. Why? Why does God want heaven on earth? It's what he created us for, you know, and if we could just get there, we wouldn't have all the problems that we have in our world today. As we focus and reflect on the first part of the Lord's Prayer, God reminds us, again, of who God is as our God of love and forgiveness that our world so desperately needs. As God nurtures our relationship through Jesus' prayer, we see how God has always helped people to call upon the name of the Lord, to call upon God in prayer, or just to lash out or yell, or whatever. Just get, build that communication to help us to remember who God is and God's love and forgiveness, like God did for King David. That's what Psalm 51 is all about. You know, King David is sweating bullets. He knows you know, his adulterous affair and having Bathsheba's husband killed in battle, there weren't sacrifices for those things. There were no sacrifices for premeditated murders. So David is calling out to God to create a clean heart in him and to restore the joy of God's bountiful spirit of forgiveness that he did not deserve. He calls out. Yes. Can I add something? Sure. I, using prayer is what I'm trying to illustrate. I uh, went to see my dad yesterday. And you all know he's older. He's 98. And he had lost one of his hearing aids. And I said, oh, God, please, if it's anywhere in here, let us find it. And then I went and got some help. And uh, the, the assistant, the aide, came, and she, she's tiny. And she walked over the bed and pulled the chair out, which I hadn't had the guts to do but his recliner out from the wall and there in the middle where we couldn't see it was the hearing aid and you know we both said praise God praise God <laughs> hallelujah thank Jesus I mean, that's really important to you <laughs> you know and it's also it's important to say prayers of thankfulness because I think we do that fewer times than when we need something how many times do we thank you God you know for whatever yeah, it's usually, please God, please God. Like King David, you know, you know, wash me clean, uh, what is it? Um, wash me clean with hyssop. Make me purer than snow. And hyssop was very important in the Hebrew uh, people. Hyssop was what they used to put the blood over the door frames during Passover. So God, not the angel of God, God, would pass over that house and save the people. It was with a hyssop branch during their worship services that they would dip the blood in it and sprinkle the blood on the people. Kind of weird, you know, but signifying the forgiveness through the blood. And it was, it was with a branch of hyssop stock that they lifted a cup of wine to Jesus on the cross to be the Passover lamb to pass over the sin of the world to make us pure, whiter than snow. David received that forgiveness, and David lived that forgiveness. As we strive to trust him and put God first in our lives, as we move into the rest of Jesus' prayer, 
we began to focus more on God's will and not our wills. Give us today our daily bread. What is our daily bread? Everything we need, not what we want. We don't need Vanderbilt to win. <laughs> but we would have. Okay, that was terrible. But yeah, our basic needs. I mean, you can read them what Luther says in the Catechism. The basic needs for what we need for daily life. What do you think is the main daily bread most, if not everybody, needs? God's word. God's will. God's will. Word. Word. Okay. Uh, okay, God's word. And I would say a capital word. Yes. Jesus. And Jesus' is love and Jesus' is acceptance and Jesus' is compassion for the people. I believe that's what most, if not all, people need to, most to be loved and to be accepted. Just hours. Oh. Hours our collectively to feed all of us, so it's not just what we yeah. need individually. It's right. Yes. Feeding the world. Yes. Did you read this next line? No. <laughs> being I blessed with <laughs> be, <laughs> being blessed with God's daily bread, we began to see those without daily bread, without being accepted, without being loved. And God empowers us to help, to share God's daily bread of grace, sometimes with a visit, sometimes with a bath bag, just whatever. <coughs> forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Okay, we're just going to skip that one. Because <laughs> we don't really do that really well, do we? Go ahead. No. Uh, well, <laughs> well, if that's God hard. forgave me as well as I forgive somebody else, I'm in deep duty. I know. We don't want God to forgive us as we forgive others. You know, but it's hard. It's hard to do that. You know, ask Jesus. Again, Jesus fulfilled the law for us by forgiving us. And we know how hard it was for him to forgive everyone from his cross. But we need to do it. We need to do it. Um, what does forgiveness do for us, or do for we, those that we forgive? What does it do? It helps us to heal. It helps us to heal. Absolutely. And we're afraid to do it because we don't know how people are going to accept it or not accept it, and it's hard. It's hard. But it brings healing, and it frees us from our bondage, from our wills, our bondage to sin, you know, that it it frees us from our bondage of sin, but it also frees us to, frees us to love, to forgive. And again, as we do that, our lives are a little bit better. Save us from the time of trial. God does not tempt or cause bad things to happen to us. Have you ever heard the phrase, if God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it? Have you ever heard that? Okay, well, if you haven't heard it, forget I said it. <laughs> don't, just don't ever believe that because from our understanding of God, that is not the God we believe in. That says God calls whatever happened, you know, to just to get you to learn a lesson. God works through the midst of things to help us to know God's love and forgiveness and the help that we need. Um, you know, and then God, you know, helps us, you know, part of the Ten, uh, part of the Ten Commandments. Uh, as I said a little bit earlier, you know, try to live them because our lives are a little bit better. You know, and God empowers us to better live our lives. So we might not fall into temptations, but God is always there. And we'll talk a lot about that next week in baptism. Uh, deliver us from evil. Uh, I kind of like to think that is delivered us from evil because God has already delivered us from all evil by what Christ did, you know, throughout his life, death, and resurrection. He delivered us from the power of sin and death, which affects our body, mind, and spirit. God has delivered us. He has washed us clean with hyssop and made us purer than snow because of Christ's experience. You know, helping us to have 
kingdom lives right here and now. And why? For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Because it is all about the kingdom, God's kingdom. The Lord's Prayer is more than just a prayer. It really is. It can truly be a way of life. As God's Spirit helps us to remember who God is as creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, where God is, like everywhere and everything, what God's kingdom is, a place of right relationships, of love and comfort and care and compassion, what God's will is and where God's will is to be done, God's will of love, and that's supposed to be done everywhere. As we know, the daily bread of grace God so freely gives us through Christ's expense. As we forgive as we have been forgiven. As we know that we have been saved from all trials and all temptations forever, again, by the blood of the Lamb. And that we are delivered from the evils of sin and death forever. May we be open to God's bountiful, bountiful spirit of grace to live Jesus' prayer, to fulfill our calling to help our world be healed, be healed from our sickness of divisions. Oh, my gosh. What's going to happen in a month from Tuesday? Help us to be healed, to pray for all, to bring God's acceptance, to bring God's love to all, as James said in our text. You know, and just a side note, James was Jesus' brother who did not get along with him growing up. And he, the, 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 the legend goes that, you know, once he saw his brother horribly murdered and not believing in him, I'll never eat again until he comes and forgives me, which scripture tells us that he did. No one is left out. Why? Because the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Even though God's kingdom will come without our help or our prayers, as Luther says, it's going to come, but God wants it to come in and through us. And that's why we pray that God's prayer, Buzz, you said it right, changes us to be more God-like, to partner with God, to bring God's kingdom and peace to earth through us that, again, we so desperately need. Thanks for the discussion. Amen.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Let us share God's peace with one another. For our visitors, we really don't pass the plate around. Okay. But if you'd like to leave something, there's places here for you. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. God of grace, Hear our creator of every creature on earth, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of cattle, birds of the air, animals of the field, and those who share our homes. We pray for safe harvest for farmers this fall. Reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. God of grace. Sovereign God, we give thanks that you are mindful and benevolent to even us mere mortals. Accompany us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations. Endow leaders with minds of justice and hearts for compassion. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Restoring Lord, grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering. We lift up to you with our voices or in our hearts now, those and all those on our prayer sheet. Lord, we also lift up Michael Campbell as he's waiting some test results. We pray for Sandy Crow as she is rehabbing after a fall. Work through medical professionals to diagnose these pain and give life to all who seek their wisdom and experience. God of grace. Unifying God. Humans were created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace. Gracious God, we lift up to you those who are grieving. We lift up Jennifer Terrell's 
family at the death of her dad. Uh, we prayed for uh, D. Skilbred's uh, brother, Joel, and for James and Kathy Brandt, uh, Brandt our members who were in South Carolina. Um, Kathy's father, James Boynton, entered your church triumphant also this week. Be with those families as, as they mourn their loss and help them as they know their, their loved ones are celebrating, but help them during their time of grieving. Lord, we pray for all those that are on fall break. We pray for safe travel as they go to their, to their times of rest and, and renewal. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of resurrection, you prepare a place in the kingdom through Christ's death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending voices. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. 
saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me gracious god may we be bold to pray and even more bold to live the prayer our lord taught us our father, our father who art in heaven shall be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen you may be seated By the way, this is the bread we made last week. I, I think we did. Because we had an intergenerational Sunday school and we made communion bread, so we're going to say it is. <laughs> Sorry about it. Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Come to the table where all are welcome and all be solved. For those that are online, this is Christ's body and blood, God's love, given and shed for you. For those that are new today, just come down the center aisle uh, when you're ready. Uh, we use bread, but we have wafers also. The gold chalice will have wine. The clay chalice will have grape juice. After receiving the host, just dip whichever one you want. And then after you commune, you can stand at the altar for some time of prayer or simply return to your seats. Again, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all is prepared.
Christ that you're able. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthens us this day and every day in his love and in his grace. Amen. <laughs> with the bread and wine of your sacrifice we received at your table fill us with your Holy Spirit strengthen and empower us to share this gift of life and love with all people to bring your peace into our world Amen the blessing of our triune God Father Son and Holy Spirit who loves us feeds us and journeys with us promises to always be with us this day and forever Amen. Amen. The closing hymn will be on the screen. <coughs>
my heart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, sorry. You're